what did you think of the uh, the episode? I think when you see that episode, it's it, there's absolutely no doubt why Ricky Martin receives an outstanding supporting actor in a limited series or movie Emmy nomination this year. And I think that's also worth a round of applause. Um, clearly, Ricky Martin has been a, an incredibly famous person for a very, very long time. But, I, but and I, I want to talk a little bit before he comes out about the man that I know and have got, got to know, because he's actually, I think, an inspiration. And I say this as a straight white guy. He's an inspiration. This is a man who... <laughs> Bravely, I know the white guy joke's funny, right? Yeah, it's a little funny. Um, um, it, but he, you know, he he risked a lot by showing the world who he really was, and he risked a lot by taking on a role like this by showing the world exactly what he could do. And I think that that to me is of all these things, and we're going to talk about a lot of it today. But that to me is truly inspiring because that to me is what a real American artist is about. It's about telling the truth, and it's about being your own truth. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, Mr. Ricky Martin. Now, we're going we're gonna to sit for a while and talk, and then we're going to have some questions. I know that you guys have provided some questions, and we're going to go to those as well. But first of all, I, I have to ask you, um, it's a long way from the love boat, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. Research. <laughs> so that was 1984, wow. and, um, and I was part of Menudo, and they invited us to be part of the love boat. And... Uh, and I had the opportunity to work with Lana Turner, rest in peace. Nice. I was, I was, nice. uh, she was being next to her. That was one of my first uh, opportunities as an actor. And then it, it became a little bit more complicated, but it was good. <laughs> it was and, good and, and now, beautiful. And now, now I want to talk a little bit about, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things to talk about with this, but you know, and you, you've, 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 you've appeared on screen as an actor on a number of occasions, but this, this role, working with Ryan and American Crime Story, and we all know, especially with OJ, the incredibly high standard that mm -hmm. was set. So give us a little bit of a sense of how you and Ryan started talking, how you got this mm. role, and what you thought when you got it. Oh, well, first of all, I, I, I have to mention that the first time I had the opportunity to work on a television series, I was, I was 15 years old, um, and it was in Argentina. And, and that's where I, where I got bit by the bug. I, I, I love how it felt. I love telling stories. And, and the directors and the other actors that I was working with really were really supportive. So I had a, an amazing experience as an actor. But obviously, I was part of this band, and I had to finish the contract. And immediately, once I finished the contract, I went immediately to, to New York. I, I auditioned for, for Tisch, School of the Arts. And then they called me from Mexico to start doing theater immediately. So I said, OK, so let, let's start doing Direct. Let's go straight to acting. Let's go and do some theater. And then I did some more television series in in Mexico. Then I went to Broadway, and uh, and then General I General Hospital. Uh, General Hospital, daytime <laughs> television as well. It was, uh, hey man, very everybody starts out on General Hospital. Just very tell Juliana Moore, right? Very, <laughs> Demi Moore, right? She, exactly. She, exactly. Demi Moore. But uh, but uh, and, and of course I went to Broadway, and but then I started you know surfing the the, the wave of, of music, and and uh, we did some really very beautiful important things as well. But then thank you. But um, but music was always there, and they always ask me so so you know when are you going back to acting? And I said whenever I have the opportunity to be to be surrounded by an am amazing group of actors, whenever I'm ready, when whenever I'm I'm, I'm, I'm Whenever I, I have the opportunity to tell an amazing story, whenever I am, um, I get to work with incredible directors and producers, and that's what just happened. I gotta be careful with it, with what I wish for because that's 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 what just happened before so Versace. How, so then, how did how did you and Ryan first meet and sit down and talk about this? Because Ryan, you know, yeah. for him, casting is is almost mm -hmm. is almost number one. It's before yeah. the cameras start rolling, is finding it's finding exactly important. the right people to play those roles. And you're playing someone who's still alive. Yeah, I'm, I'm so so thankful. Uh, so I worked with Ryan in a, in, an, in a Glee episode. Mm -hmm. And then one day he, he just called me, Ricky, you're in LA, come, let's, let's go have dinner. Okay, sure, no problem, let's do this. Um, so he told me what, what was happening, what, what he was working on. And he said, I, and I would love for you to play Antonio Amico. 
And of course, I was, I was, I wanted to scream in the table, but I kept it low and simple. And uh, we were at the sunset, yeah, well, sunset tower, and, yeah. and I just wanted to keep like it on as your simple. Phone, like, well, let me check my schedule. Let, let me yeah, see exactly. how this works. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then I asked, who's going to be playing Donatella? He said, Penelope. Psst, yeah. I peed a little yeah. bit. <laughs> 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 I mean, just. <laughs> Come you know, on. you got to be honest in front of the SAG group, uh, right? I mean, let's like, be honest. Uh, I had, We've all been there. I had, I had worked with her on, on different occasions, but more in a philanthropic work. It was not as an actor. But most importantly, it was he gave me the opportunity to tell an amazing story and to bring justice to something, to some things that we still live in, even though this is a story that was that, you know, something that happened 20 years ago. The level of injustice in this story is, is extremely frustrating. And and, uh, and the fact that uh, I was going to be able to tell this story directed and, and, and protected, someone like Ryan Murphy, gave me a, a, a lot of motivation. I was very inspired, and, uh, and I consider it the, you know, I, I would say probably the, the role of my life as of, as of now, because as of because, now, as of now yeah. and, I, and I say this with, trust me, I, I, I just want to keep my feet on the ground. Uh, because it was an incredible experience, but the, the only thing I wanted was to be able to talk um, on behalf of, of of men and women that are still struggling, I mean, if we have, if you, if you see the story, you, you see someone like like Gianni Versace, someone extremely powerful, uh, someone that millions considered a genius, and he, and he was struggling. He was struggling with his sexual identity. It took him a minute to be able to talk and to accept who who he really is and, and who he really was and make it public. So and, and you and you know one of the one of the in this episode that everyone's just seen today, which is the opening episode of, of, mm. of, of this part of American Crime Story, the, the second anthology season, um, you know, there's that scene where you are covered in blood mm -hmm. in your tennis whites and the FBI agent is talking to you and there's clearly a bigoted mentality, <laughs> but also a massive culture cross where it, there it's it's like two men are sitting in a room that are sitting in different worlds let alone different countries You're talking about completely different and, and the way you play that role mm -hmm. and then what i thought was quite remarkable is it then pivots to penelope showing up and it turns to a very different thing because it's it, it's another type of power play yeah. i wanted to get a sense from you about about that particular scene and about mm -hmm. how you as an actor prepared for it mm -hmm. how you worked with ryan who directed the opening episode yeah. and yeah. and how you worked with penelope on that particular scene yeah so believe it or not i was already working on set uh, the scene of the investigation and penelope showed up so R ryan told me stay right there don't move let's move on to the next scene penelope come in she walks in <laughs> And I'm, I'm in character. I'm, I'm, I'm com I feel completely raped uh, by the scene that I, that I had just shot. And, and I did not want it to move from that scene. Obviously, everybody takes a break. Everybody goes for a, for a, for a smoke or whatever. And I just wanted to stay there. And, and Penelope came in to rehearse. But Ryan said, no, let's shoot. Let's do it. Um, it was uh, it was very emotional. I need to go back for a second. I had the, the opportunity to talk to Antonio Lamico himself, and and I and I told him I know I know it's it's been many many years. I know that you've probably are clo you know you've closed this chapter of your life, but I've had I've had this opportunity, and and I'm going to ask you some really heavy questions. Uh, I, I I'm sorry if I'm intrusive. The only the only thing that I'm here and I said yes to this character is because because I want to shed some light into what you and, and Johnny represent and into what you guys had. Uh, so he was extremely generous. He shared with me everything that he felt when he, when he saw the body. Um, and then it was funny because when we were shooting, uh, obviously it was right in front of the villa where, actually, where everything happened, but there, was, there were a lot of paparazzis. And, uh, and it and must have felt so real. I mean, it was real. There. You're it there. Was, in that it moment. was real. I took. I, I was alone for an hour uh, before they they said action, and I and I just I just went in full on. And and when I'm when I'm when I'm shooting, I'm not supposed to holding. I'm not I'm not supposed to. I'm walking around him, and 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 Ryan is telling me scream, scream. And I said ambulance, ambulance. But I but I said Ryan, please let me hold him. So I talked to Edgar. Edgar, can I hold you? Mm -hmm. Uh, and Ryan, and please go do it, hold him. So I, I held him and it felt much better. I really needed that. Then I go back to Antonio and I go, Antonio. So he goes, Ricky, hold on a second. Uh, 
I didn't, I did not touch him. I was not allowed to touch him. Why did you touch him? Because he saw the pictures, because he saw the pictures of the paparazzis next day. And I'm like, oh my God, Antonio, once again, I mean, well, we are not, we're not doing a photo of the moment. We're doing a painting of the moment so we can add colors and we can get rid of colors. An expressionistic painting and, in many ways. Yes, yeah. in many ways. I needed, I, this is something that I needed as an actor. We have, we have a little bit of freedom when it comes to that. Ryan was very comfortable with that choice. And, and it's and, such a powerful moment. And, it, it, and, it, and it, I think it became something so religious. I mean, it became like, like La Pieta. It, I, I mean, like. <laughs> yeah, I, I was yeah. holding him and... and uh, I mean, that's when... I remember when I saw it, when, when, when I saw the screen, I remember thinking that there was, a, there was a, an almost freeze in that moment that became a portrait. And when you look, of course, mm. when you look at the, the, the artwork that, that, that Versace had around his house and the personification of his, fashion, of his line and what have you, it felt like that. It felt like you were linking to something biblical mm. and uh, we spent hours I spent hours holding him uh, crying I went through every emotion uh, and then obviously the next scene that we shot was him um, you know paramedics putting him in the ambulance and me not being able to to go with him because I am not his husband um, so once again just that that moment gave me more strength and and, and got me even more angry uh, about the reality that they went through and what what we go through me someone you know part of the lgbt community we we still have we've done beautiful things we've taken very beautiful steps towards equality but there's still so much that needs to be done the fact that i am talking about Gianni versace uh, i'm doing uh, excuse excuse me I, I was able to to do this part uh talking and telling a story about Gianni versace and the fact that i just came back from the middle east and they were asking me about Gianni versace and the relationship between antonio and Gianni versace in countries where this is not spoken uh, this is part of it this is this is why i consider this to be so important. Uh, kids are listening. Men and women that are still struggling with, with their sexual identity are listening. I'm going to small towns of Latin America and I'm talking about, I wish they were married. I wish marriage was an option back then. So that's, that's, that's where I see the power in, in this. And in the this. power, I mean, I think also too, for a number of people, mm. it's, it's, you know, for your accomplishments as an actor, Mm -hmm. aside for a second, mm -hmm. for your accomplishments as a human being, I think for a lot of people it's very powerful because you, you've you walked the walk, so to speak, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let's be honest, there's some people, and I, and, and I know mm -hmm. this because you told me, but you were in Miami when this shit went down. Like, and this, this was, sort of yeah. stuff is, you know, this is when you watch this, mm -hmm. this was literally a crime happening, hiding in plain sight. And no. nobody could get past their bigotry to solve it. The thing, and, and when you see that, and when you see it beautifully played out, like a tapestry like this, and, and I'm, I'm going to quote myself now because I can, um, in, <laughs> in, my, in my review of this, I mentioned what a great performance you gave because of the show, yeah, what a great you. performance. And it's true, and I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> because because I, think, I, think, I think the strongest performances are the ones that come from the real place. Mm. You're an actor playing a role. Mm -hmm. You're not that person. But so much of what that person is and what that person's life was, was clearly what you were playing. And I think that that's a testament to your strengths and talents and also to your character. And I Thank think that, that's something that needs to be talked about because it's not ending for you. Because as you say, no. you're going to towns and talking about no, it. No, this is, this is part of, of the mission. And, and now you've given me, a, you know, now it's, it's, a, it's a really big responsibility that I knew from the moment I came out. But, but it just life keeps surprising you and, and, and it, life keeps giving you, presenting you with this gems and there's amazing opportunities just to just just to create awareness in this amazing journey called life uh but yes for example one of the scenes that we shot where actually Janny comes out to you know to uh, to a journalist and and he introduces me as his companion i i got to be on both sides of of the scene because you know i was a gay man in the closet a celebrity and and i I had my, I had to hide my, my lovers, mm -hmm. and uh, so that that put me in a really emotional place because uh, I thought I had closed that door and I was already, you know, like on the other side of the fence and completely at ease. But it just it just it took me to a very uh, um, 
I would say painful, painful uh, mm -hmm. place because I, I now I, only that way I, I completely felt what my lovers back then felt. Um, but were you again, surprised by that? Uh, were you surprised that, that, that taking on the role had that deep an emotional impact on you? Uh, I had no idea what it was going to become, but but you know once you know once this, this, they said it's rap. <laughs> the last day of shooting, uh, almost six or I don't know how many months into shooting, it, it it really hit me. And and the last the 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 day I saw the last episode of the show, I called Penelope and I'm like Penelope, I'm so affected. I am so I feel horrible. This was the saddest thing I've seen in in so long. And she said, Ricky, we got to move on the next project, please, because this is heavy. <laughs> and I and I said. Okay, we got to snap out. Right. We got to snap out. But it was. But you're like, Javier, Ricky's on the phone. Okay, okay. It's, okay. <laughs> no, Javier was was also amazing, and you know, in, in this process. But it was, I I was talking to her and said, I, that's true. Move on. But I said, I said, this is this is a life changing um, uh, character because it just it just hit me personal. And then people coming from all walks of life talking to me about about what they felt with the series in general. So I, I feel nothing but gratitude, man. Nothing but gratitude, really. Now, let's to talk about a life-changing experience, though. I, I, I always want to know this because I'm, well, it's my job, but I'm, but I'm naturally curious. I want to know about how you found out about the Emmy nomination. Because no one ever, I, it's always funny, whenever I ask people this story, it's never like, well, I was sitting there having coffee and I saw it on my phone and it was very, it's always like, it's always like, well, I was caught in traffic and this is like, a, so what happened to you? I, to I totally forgot that the nom nominations were coming, I was sleeping. <laughs> and so the lady that works in my house, she was banging on the door, she goes, it's an emergency, it's an emergency. <laughs> it's an emer you think the worst, you think your kids, you think your, your, your husband, but my, my husband wasn't with me at the moment, but... But, so it was, it was my publicist. She goes, "You got nominated," <laughs> and and immediately, I, and then immediately, my phone, my phone was burning for the next three days. And obviously, my my, my managers, my you know, people from everywhere, just calling me. And everybody told me, "Live it, enjoy it, feel it. It's your moment." And and. I, I don't. I don't need anything else. Of course, if I win, I, I'll be celebrating. If, I, if I've been celebrating for God knows how many weeks since I was, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna pull and take it all the way to next year if I win. But it's uh, it's been beautiful. And once again, I'm just humbled to be surrounded by amazing actors. And and I just that takes me back to when I was 15 years old, the first time I ever heard action as an actor. And I said, Wow, this is it. This is, yeah, it's it's a dream, man. It's a dream. Mm. Hey, uh, get Wikipedia, pal. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I can say no, Australia. No, I can say no, Australia was in the in the nineties. This is nineteen eighty five. I was living in Argentina. Eighty seven. Excuse me. Por siempre well, amigos, forever friends. The series was called. Well, you've been performing yeah. professionally since you were fourteen or fifteen. Well, mm. I I started doing TV commercials when I was like nine, maybe <gasps> like nine. And then I auditioned for the band when I was yeah. 12, and then, um, and then 15 uh, uh, as an actor. Hey. For, uh, for, for Menudo, you mean? Oh, it was, I was auditioning for like, for like a year. They called me three times, and three times they said, nope, it's not you. I and then on the fourth time, they said, yes, it's definitely I you. Have heard <laughs> I have heard that auditioning for Ryan Murphy is harder than auditioning for Menudo. I did an audition for Riot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I've heard from other people. I did an audition at all. Huh? <laughs> but, no, that's good to, but, but that was also something mm -hmm. I, I wanted to talk about a little mm -hmm. bit is, you know, um, you've talked, we talked a little bit about you and, and Ryan speaking about it. We've talked a little about this, but I wanted to get a sense of working with him as a director. What, mm -hmm. what was the, you know, that so often, especially when you're talking about intense emotional mm -hmm. scenes like this. Give us a little sense about how you and Ryan really locked in together. Oh my God, Ryan told me, Ricky, don't 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 beat yourself so hard. Don't you just just relax, go breathe, because I was so into it. But the beautiful thing about Ryan is that, that he's extremely specific about what he needs. Once you give him what he needs, he allows you to fly in a in a in any direction, and he's very open uh, to to your perspective. And and I say, I think this is this is not right, Ryan. I think this should be. You know, let's let me take this to the next level. Doing this, and he goes, try it. So, so he's uh, 
he's very open, open to ideas. And he's, I mean, every time we're in set and he, and he goes, I have an idea. Everybody goes crazy because, because oh my God, what's going to happen now? Uh, but every time he, he comes with an idea, it's freaking brilliant. So yeah, it, it was very, very There's special. There's a, a big element of trust between the two of you. Yes, yes. Once again, once you give him what, the, the, what he asked for, uh, he, he, you can fly. You can fly as an actor and you can, you can bring your input. And, and I think that's, that's brilliant. It makes him even more, yeah. I have to ask you this because obviously this was the second season. I don't know if season's the right word. Second anthology of American Crime Story. Mm -hmm. The first, of course, being OJ. You guys have had a tremendous uh, Emmy result. It's unbelievable. Fabulous. <laughs> um, but I, I want to ask, and you're always pretty honest with me, knowing that you were doing the second season after OJ, were you a little bit intimidated or thinking like, oh, this is going to be like, how is this going to work? No time for intimidation. You, <laughs> you, they said it, you're, you're in it and you just, you, you dive into research. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about what happened to American Crime Story before or what was going to happen after. I, 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 for a moment, I thought this American Crime Story the Versace story was going to be the third season. So I, I, I just focus on, on, first of all, trying to find Antonio mm -hmm. uh, because he was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. He was, he, he, he's, you know, he's in a little town in Italy. He's completely disconnected from everything that has to do. And, 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 and let me go back. I, I, just, I just got ready as an actor. I, I, I had my acting coach every day in my house, working in my accent, specific, specifically in the Italian accent. Uh, uh, in English, which you pulled off rather well. I tried. I, I do have my accent, but the thing is, was to get in, in tune with Donatella and Gianni for us to kind of speak the same. You know, it was very, it was very important. Yeah, yeah. You, you have the Italian accent of the south, and you have the Italian accent of the north. What's wrong with you? Mm. So it was very important for us just to connect. And and uh, um, but it it was uh, it was it was not easy, but it was fascinating. What do you want to do next? Um, I, uh, I want to, I, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to be in front of the camera again and I want to tell more important stories and, uh, and I will. So that's always going to be an important part of your acting, the, 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 the message and the justice I mean, if and the have, focus. If we have a platform to be able, you know, to talk on, on behalf of those that aren't being heard and to try to make a difference in people, why not? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm going to keep getting ready for this. I, I, I study every day my life, my emotions, and, and one beautiful thing that I, that I know is that actors don't know how to lie. Mm -hmm. And if you're in touch with yourself and, and, and you're, uh, with your emotions and, and you're honest, people, people, people understand, pe people get it. So let's see, what, let's see what happens. I think music will always be there. Um, uh, uh, but, but definitely I will... I want to. I want to keep pushing the acting side. And it's the evolution of an artist, as well. Yeah. Um, to speaking of which, some of the artists who are joining us here in the audience have some questions. Um, so, this is kind of almost like a follow-up to the one I just asked you, which is: Is there a character that you would like to play in the future? Though this question from, uh, I think it's Cosette. Gazette, I just said how I love. You, you, you use the word futuristically. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. But is there a particular character you would like to play in the future? Because I'm Italiana. Si, Italiana, veramente, yeah. Hey, my name's Dominic. I can go with it too, okay? Yeah. <laughs> in the future. You know, um, I really liked what Matt Smith did in The Crown with Prince Philip, oh. something like that, so I can use, so I can really study my Brit accent. That is non-existent. Oh, moment. you want to you want to go? But I would like to. I would like to. I I can, I can be European as well. I can be Latino. I can be. Ah. So maybe just, just maybe that, that I can be challenged using you know uh, getting ready with, with with different accents. I would definitely do that. So so the first person that came in was Matt Smith. Mm -hmm. um, as an artist, how do you go deeper into yourself to create work, whether it is acting or music, that feels authentic and organic to you? I paraphrase your question a little bit, Fred. Oh, well, the way I worked was hours and hours in solitude, uh, in silence. Um, I, I, 
I left my family for a minute uh, because, especially for this this project, you know, there were no easy s scenes, um, and I couldn't be next to my kids. They they bring out the spark, they bring out the light, and and I had to. I went to Miami for three weeks on on my own, and and kids stay at home with a with a hubby, and yeah. and and that's. Is that hard? Uh, uh, I, I am obsessed with my family. I don't know how to travel without them. And my kids were born on the road. Yeah. Uh, and you know, Ricky I'm, has uh, twin boys who are, who are about <laughs> ten years old, by the way. Yeah, you know? no, my, yeah. my kids. They're pretty fantastic kids. So you can clap <laughs> louder than that. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. My kids, my kids, my everybody says kids, but you know, kids need stability. And I'm like, I'm their stability. If I'm mm -hmm. around, they're stable. So yeah, we've been traveling for the next for the last three years, and and they're doing well. They're doing well in school. So yes, it is difficult for me mm -hmm. to be away from them. Um, and and that is my experience with this project. I needed to be alone. I needed to. I, I I needed to be Antonio, and I needed to be depressed, and and I needed to uh, I needed to More find one. the dark, the the that the dark in me, the darkness in me. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, but it's, it was a very serious uh, process. I mean, at, at the end of the show, I I I choose to to commit suicide. Yeah. So so I I cannot be playing with. My, I mean, a lot of people say when they say cut and they, when they say rap, go back home and be you. I am. Um, I'm. I'm working on it, <laughs> and, uh, and always, this is what I, I needed to do at this at this state of my life. I don't know what's going to happen with the next project, but I felt this is what I needed today. I've always wondered how, especially when when you're doing very strong dramatic roles. I, I just don't know how someone leaves that behind. You know, it's just like, right. and then I was like, let's go to the In-N-Out Burger and have some food. Like, right. I just don't know how you right, do right, that. Right. I mean, and, and I know that you just poured everything to this. As an actor, you talked a little bit about this in our discussion. You talked about working with your acting teachers and your acting coaches and stuff like that. For you, is there a particular, I mean, some of what you describe, of course, to some people, and this is a room full of actors, sounds like the method. And finding that, you know, is that, is, as an actor, is that what you employ? Or do you have strategies, you know, it's like, well, for this role, it's a full immersion. But for something else, I might just, you know. Um, maybe for, for the next project, I don't yeah. have to go there. Uh, but I, I feel that this is what I needed to do. And once again, being able to talk to, talk to Antonio, he was so generous with everything that, that he shared. He, 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 didn't, he went into intimacy moments. He went into, into what he felt when he was found after he tried to commit suicide. He, he went deep into what he felt when he saw the body of his... 15 year uh, companion uh how how he felt raped with the investigation mm -hmm. how that i and once again i am i am i am um i am telling the story of someone that is he's still with us and and uh it, it was a big responsibility it was not a game for me and, have you kept in touch with him um uh not not really yeah, no, no, I mean, really. I suppose in some ways it's like it, it's an immense, intense really. thing, and you have to step back a bit. Um, but not for me, of course. I would yeah. love to hear what he has to say, but maybe he's not ready. So yeah, uh, that's it. You know, um, I cannot. I shouldn't even try uh, as to ask him. What, you know what he felt. Uh, regardless, <laughs> he might say I hated it. Or <laughs> Or, uh, but it, but but once again, it, it really doesn't matter because um, um, his his head, his heart, I'm sure went to so many places. Maybe he he, he wasn't ready to even see it. Yeah. So so we don't know. Yeah. You talked about and I, as we're going to wrap up soon. But you talked about one of the most important things about this for you was as a man who you know you you declared to the world who you were on your website about nine years ago, I believe. Tweet, tweet, eh? yeah, online. <laughs> yes, um, and and you got a big reaction instantly because that's part of the beauty and part of the curse of online communication. Um, and you've talked about when we've been up here, you've talked about how going to small towns in Latin America, going to kids, talking to kids, talking to people who who they they they're trying to find who they are. For you, how do you feel that that is impacting you as a person? Do you feel that you feel emboldened by being able to say, "I lived through this." They live through this, and you can live through something better. If I, if some people thought I was loud about me talking about my homosexuality, they they have seen nothing yet. This is only the beginning, 
because once again i go back to the reaction and and uh, and and with what we're going through right now politically around the world we got to be louder than ever and I, and that's what i'm going to do so uh, uh, with, with with this nomination i i just think about those kids that are that are listening to this that are hiding behind their computers listening to us right now um, I, I'm talking to you. Uh, everything is going to be fine, you know. But once again, I just I just came back from the Middle East, and and I talked about homosexuality. I go to Latin America, and I talked about who I am and what I'm made of. And uh, and this is this is what Ryan does. He brings out these stories that that that, that need to be heard. And and it's not about po poking people's eyes. It's about sharing your your identity your nature and what you're made of and and, and being proud about it ladies yeah. and gentlemen mr ricky martin thank you, thank you so much always thank my you.